What's up, interwebs? It's me, Keo Killa, and today I'm here to review Titanfall 2 for the Xbox One. Let's get started. Titanfall was unequivocally my favorite modern first-person shooter. I know, there's a lot of great shooters out there, but the guys and gals over at Respawn did something special and different with Titanfall, and the results of their risky endeavor led to a game that arguably redefined modern competitive shooters. I mean, every Call of Duty since its launch has attempted to augment movement in similar ways. And while they're getting closer to the buttery, smooth, sextastic movement that Titanfall made a staple, they're still miles away from perfecting the formula. Especially with the launch of Titanfall 2, which greatly improves on almost every facet that made the first game so special without removing anything. Except burn cards. Bye, Felicia! And they even managed to add heaps of new content, like a campaign a really, really good campaign, and tons of content to the multiplayer. As far as the campaign is concerned, let me start by regaling you with a history lesson. Remember Infinity Ward? Yeah, the guys that brought you Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, and a bunch of other games? They were co-founded by a guy named Vince Zampella. Vince Zampella, who is now the CEO of Respawn Entertainment, creators of Titanfall. Did anyone else feel that, after Modern Warfare 2, the Infinity Ward games that followed just didn't have the same magic? They were really good, they just lacked a certain something that the previous Infinity Ward games had. I can't tell you what it was exactly that made them so special, but what I can tell you is that Vince Zampella and many members of Infinity Ward left the company due to a legal dispute after the release of Modern Warfare 2, and subsequently were brought on by EA and created another studio to make Titanfall. So, to me, in a way, though the game's setting and story were nothing like Modern Warfare or the games before it, Titanfall was sort of the spiritual successor to those magical Infinity Ward shooters. Again, the setting and story were different, but I felt that magic again, in a way I hadn't in a long time. And I think that Zampella and friends are definitely linked to that. Right, Illuminati? Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh -huh. My point is, the campaign in Titanfall 2 has a lot of that magic that I felt in Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. And I believe it's because Zampella and team are so good at tugging at your feels. You start the campaign as Jack Cooper, a grunt that longs to one day be a pilot. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Cooper is thrust into the role of pilot with little to no training, and you'll spend the campaign bonding with and building your relationship with your Titan, BT-7274, as you continue to finish the mission that BT's former pilot had originally embarked on. In doing so, you get to really become accustomed with what separates Titanfall from the rest of the pack, the fluid movement mechanics and the Titans. Though you only play with one Titan the whole campaign, the game allows you to use all the new Titan types by allowing you to equip their skills as loadouts. And though the story is really good and the magic feels are present, magic feels present, 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 the story feels like it ends too fast. Don't get me wrong, it took me a solid five to seven hours to complete the campaign, which is isn't too shabby, but I enjoyed it so much that I wished there was more. From the platforming, to the running and gunning, even time travel. Yeah, you bet your f***ing ass there's time travel. The game acts as a testament to the engine and gameplay mechanics that Respawn created, allowing you to live in the moment and revel in the frequent satisfaction of wall running across a shifting environment by satchel charging these assholes to hell, and by hopping into Titan on Titan combat with an assortment of new, well-balanced and executed Titan abilities. And then, there's the multiplayer. The glorious, glorious multiplayer. Honestly, the multiplayer is the reason why myself and millions of others are going to pick up Titanfall 2. And aside from the burn cards, they've included everything that they had in the first game and much, much more. To start, in Titanfall, there were 17 equipable pilot guns. This go-round, there are 28. Rather than having two modifiers per gun, you now have three to four for primary weapons and two for sidearms or anti-Titan weapons. And every gun you have now can be covered in one of dozens of unlockable camouflages. Even your pilot can be decked out in camouflage this time around. And rather than having three tactical abilities to choose from, you have at least one variation of the original three and four additional abilities. You also have two separate pilot kits that help further customize your playstyle by allowing you to select passive abilities like the ability to wall hang, which isn't standard as it was in the first game, or by equipping a battery that speeds up your tactical abilities refresh rate. You can also customize your execution this time around, which is a nice touch. Also, rather than having a gun, a sidearm, and an anti-titan weapon, you now have to choose between a sidearm or an anti-titan weapon. 
which lends a different kind of balance to the game. As far as Titan weapons are concerned, there are only six base Titan weapons, but rather than picking one of the three Titans, or chassis, and then selecting a weapon and ability, you choose a specific Titan to use, and that Titan has a set of weapons and four abilities unique to that Titan, categorized as offensive ability, defensive ability, your utility, and your core ability, which is basically an ultimate attack that is charged by doing damage with your Titan. For instance, if you choose the Scorch Titan, your focus is on damage over time, and you can shoot thermite balls, which are exploding molten balls of destruction, put up a literal firewall to block incoming gunfire, use a fire slapping ability that, oddly enough, is called firewall, and drop gas canisters that spread fumes that can be ignited and slow burn an area. Or, if you choose to use the Ronin Titan, you use a gigantic shotgun and wield an enormous buster sword, whose abilities focus more on agility and high damage at the sacrifice of physical vulnerability. And each Titan is stronger or weaker versus other Titans, meaning that strategic team composition can be hugely important. But let's be honest, we're all snagging that buster sword and going to town on everybody. You can also further customize each titan visually and with ability modifiers. This time around, getting your titan during a multiplayer match isn't guaranteed and has to be earned by scoring points rather than waiting on a timer and chipping away at your inevitable titan fall. This, to me, gives the titans a little more weight since you may only encounter one or two titans a match. In Titanfall 1, you could rodeo or mount a titan as a pilot and shoot at circuits until it was dead. This time around, you mount the Titan, and if it still has its health core, you pull out a battery, which will drop the Titan to its final cautionary health bar. Meaning, when that bar is depleted, the Titan is a goner. That battery that you pulled out can now be placed into a friendly Titan, or your own for that matter, for an additional health bar, which is an awesome mechanic and adds another layer of strategy to the already complex multiplayer. What's also different this time around is that when your Titan reaches that cautionary health level, their health doesn't slowly tick away as it did in Titanfall 1. Rather, it stays unless attacked, and you can even get your health back to normal by stealing another battery from an enemy Titan. Also, if the battery has already been pulled out of the Titan, you can drop a grenade in that sucker. Let it blow up and do lots of damage. The shooting mechanics are much more fine-tuned this time around, and grappling hook! I forgot to mention the grappling hook! Yes! Whether you're firing a sniper rifle, assault rifle, a shotgun, or meleeing an enemy to death, your actions are responsive and have weight. And you can now power slide. Thank fucking God. The graphics have been greatly improved from the first game, with a higher contrast, a lot more visual detail, and the engine seems to keep up a little bit better than it did in the last game, especially when things get hectic and explodey. And the sound design is just as good, with the blend of gunfire, mechanical sounds, atmospheric musical tones. It all just really comes together with the visual design to encapsulate you in this experience. This review is long enough already, and there's plenty I left out, like the new game modes, factions, boost abilities, call signs, networks. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. If you're a fan of competitive online first-person shooters, I highly, highly recommend this game, as I feel that it's the best in its class. If you're a fan of shooters and you're just a campaign player, the campaign is great, but I wouldn't recommend spending $60 on a short, albeit great campaign. This is a multiplayer-centric game for competitive players. If you didn't like Titanfall, I'd still give this a rent, as it's refined and feels a lot tighter than its predecessor. For longtime fans of Titanfall, we finally have the sequel that will continue to have other shooters try and replicate the fine details. But rest assured, the frontier is back, and Titanfall 2 is here to stay. Thank you so much for watching! Don't forget to subscribe, and if you so desire, check out this other stuff! You guys are amazing as always. I'll see you next time. Later.